assalamu alaikum okay uh, this is a shell and tube heat exchanger we have in our lab this is from the adibon in this experiment what we have to do we have to determine the heat transfer between the hot water and the cold water and to determine the effectiveness of the heat exchanger and finally we have to calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient for this particular type of heat exchanger these are three objectives for this experiment first of all we will look at the components of the experiment on the right side you can see this is hot water tank we have to fill the water here the tap water and then this is the pump for the circulation of hot water on the left side you can see a shell and tube heat exchanger uh this gray one is the wall the pressure regulator wall and you can see two flow meters to measure the flow rate of hot and cold water these gives the value of flow rate in liter per minute okay the equipment consists of two units the right side unit this one is called the base unit on the left side this is the shell and tube heat exchanger on the right side on the base unit you can see different walls these walls are used to configure the flow of water in parallel and counter flow configuration and on the left side you can see the different sensors installed on the path of hot and cold water to take the readings of the temperature we will see the different components of the shell and tube heat exchanger this one is called the header this one is also header and there are four taps on the path of cold water and there is this one is also the tap tap wall on the left side and there is another tap wall these tappings are used to release the entrapped air from the heat exchanger now we will see uh, the different sensors installed there are seven temperature sensors on the shell and tube heat exchangers that give the values of the temperature at different points of the flow okay first of all we will look at the uh, the uh, the temperature sensors installed at the path of hot water this one the c1 pipe this is the entrance of the hot water and there's a temperature sensor st1 at the outlet of the hot water we have st2 st1 and st2 gives the values of the temperature for the hot water at the inlet and outlet of the heat exchanger the hot water enters through this pipe c1 accumulates in the header and from here the water moves in the tubes and then it again collects on the rear header and and then move through this pipe back to the c4 to the tank again you can see the flow meter this gives the value of the flow rate of the hot water in liter per minute the maximum value you can read here is 2 liter per minute and this there is a control wall to control the flow rate of the hot water the cold water enters from the tap this is the inlet from the tap water moving through this one this pipe you can measure the flow rate from this point and then there are again two paths as in the concentric pipe heat exchanger if i open this wall then the flow will be parallel and if i open this wall the flow will be counter flow so setting the flow arrangement in parallel flow configuration this one is closed and this wall should be open okay these two walls must be closed these are closed okay the cold water will 
will move from this point, this wall, and flowing through C2. This is the C2 pipe. Entering through the bottom of the heat exchanger, there is a pressure uh, temperature sensor ST3 moving through the shell of the heat exchanger. The hot water moves in the tubes while the cold water moves in the shell. And exiting from this point, here's the temperature sensor ST7. So ST3 is the inlet temperature of the cold water and ST7 is the outlet temperature and on the path you can see there are one two three four five five di different sections in which there are three temperature sensors installed along the uh, longitudinal axis of the shell this gives the values of the intermediate temperatures these are st4 st5 and st6 these are three temperature sensors to get the values of the temperature of the cold water uh, in the in intermediate ses uh, sessions, sections. So you can see the be baffle plates here uh, for to create the turbulence in the flow of the cold water. And then the cold water exiting from this point, the cold water take this path and from here it moves to the sink. Okay, this is the uh, major parts in configuration of the shell and tube heat exchanger to set uh, the uh, flow of the cold water in parallel flow. So what we have to do, we will just close these two walls here and we'll open these two walls, right? Now I'll tell you step by step procedure how to uh, perform the experiment. First of all, moving to the control panel, there's a power switch. I'll turn on the power switch. Okay, then again, you have to turn on the pump. Make sure that the water is flowing. So there's the control wall. Set the reading at the at 1.8 liter per minute or 1.6, whatever you want to. Set the flow rate of the cold water. It's also 1.8, but I can set the lower value as well. So. It's 1.7 liter per minute now. After setting the flow rates, you have to set the temperature in the tank. It's 45 now. Okay, I'll wait until the steady states have achieved since the heat is on so that's why the led light on the bottom of the side is also on okay if the temperature reaches the 45 degree in the tank then this led light will automatically be turned off okay so i'll wait right now i can see the temperature uh, in the tank is 34 degrees celsius so the heat is on so it will uh, keep increasing until it reaches 45 degree and from here i can read the different temperature values on the disk st1 to st12 but there are only temperature, seven temperature sensors so i'll uh, i'll read the values up to st1 to st7 okay st1 is 27 degrees celsius and st2 is also 27 degrees celsius st3 is 27 st4 26, 26, 26. So these are not uh, the basically the equilibrium value. So I'll have to wait 
uh, the temperature in the tank has uh, reached 39 degrees Celsius. Okay, to, uh, to keep the process, uh, to, to make the process faster, I've turned off uh, this, uh, the pump so that, so that uh, the, the tank temperature reaches uh, 45 degrees Celsius quickly. Uh, then I, I, I again turn on the pump to make the process faster. Okay, and you can see that the temperature in the tank has reached 45 degrees Celsius, and LED light on the left side is, will turn off. Okay, so just after the temperature reaches in the tank, uh, about 45 degrees Celsius, the LED light will be automatically turned off. Okay, so now I'll turn on the pump and wait so that the temperature at the inlet of uh, the shell and tube heat exchanger uh, will get stabilized. So it's right now uh, the temperature of the hot water at the inlet of the shell and tube heat exchanger is 29 degrees Celsius, and it's going uh, it's it, it's going to be increased. Uh, so I'll wait until uh, there's a difference of about five four degrees Celsius, and it will stabilize at that temperature. The temperature in the tank and at the entrance of the shell and tube heat exchanger will not be the same. It will be uh, three to four degrees Celsius lesser because of the losses in the pipes. So I'll have to wait until this temperature T1 uh, gets stabilized. So uh, you can now trace the path of the hot water. You can see that uh, this, is, this one is the exit of the hot water. Okay? The pump will supply energy to the water. And from the pipe C1, it will move to C1. Okay? So this C1 goes from this, this, this wall should be open. Okay? This wall okay, must be open. Uh, if I turn off, if I close this wall, okay, there will be no flow of the uh, hot water, and I can uh, deduct that there is no flow in the uh, uh, in the in the in the hot water channel uh, using uh, by this flow meter. Okay, so there there should be reading on the flow meter uh, showing that uh, there's a, uh, there's the flow of the hot water. Okay, from this point, C1 pipe, and to this header, the front header, and moving through the tube. That's the exit. And from this point, the C4 pipe, the outer pipe, the most outer pipe, this is the C4 pipe. And from this point, again, back to the, okay, the tank, okay, the steel tank, okay. The cold water path is open. Okay, from this water inlet, you can see, okay, the other, the, uh, the wall on the right hand side is open, okay, so the water will move from this point to the C2, okay, the outer pipe the most water pipe C2. From that point, the water will move from this enter in the shell from this bottom side, exiting from the top of the shell, and from this point in the pipe C3, it will move to the sink, okay? From this point, this is the outlet of the water. Okay, you can get, or you can note the model from here, and you can search the picture of uh, this uh, equipment on the internet from the Edubon website. Okay, coming to the control unit, I can see the, uh, this is uh, 36 and this, this image is still very low, so I'll have to wait. Okay, the dimension readings are now stable, so I'll read. Uh, the hot water inlet temperature is T1, that's 40 degrees Celsius. ST2 is the hot water temperature outlet. So this is 38 degrees Celsius. The cold water inlet temperature is 35. 4 is the intermediate temperature value, 37. 37. 38, and this is the cold water outlet. Uh, this temperature is 37 deg uh, 38 degrees Celsius. Okay, so uh, the in uh, the inlet was 35, and the outlet of the cold water is 38. Okay, the tank temperature is 45. The hot water temperature is about 1.6 liter per minute. This one is about 1.6 liter per minute. So using these values, you have to perform the calculations. And uh, for the counter flow configuration, uh, this one was for the parallel flow. For the counter flow configuration, what I have to do, uh, these two walls, this wall and 
these two walls must be closed and these two walls uh, should be opened and then again perform uh, setting the hot and cold water uh, flow rates and setting the, uh, the temperature of the tank I can get the values for the counter flow and uh, the same experiment I have to do for the parallel flow for at three different temperatures of uh, the hot water tank. Uh, one I can set 45, the other can be set at 50, 45, 55 and 60 and uh, similar readings I can take at uh, 45, 50, 60 and 40, 55 for the counter flow configuration and then these uh, two results uh, should be compared. Okay, this is about the experiment. Any question you can ask uh, in the discussion section. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you so much.